years. Now, this is what I want to mention. So after these advanced civilizations that, you know, are part of the pyramids and Gobekli Tepe and all of them, once they disappeared from these destruction, destructive events, you had kingship lowered and restarted again, like I said, in, in Kish and these other places in Mesopotamia. This is where it gets important. Those civilizations then became somewhat advanced as well, but then you had conquering armies later go through and basically destroy a lot of the evidence that had been, that had been around for those. So there's a lot of complex factors. You have basically the, the, the floods and destruction destroys the advanced civilizations, their knowledge, and then it gets restarted and it's starting up again in a lot of different places, especially Mesopotamia. And then there was a decision made. Then there was certain aspects where I think these beings, like you were brought up before, where are they? I think they left. And I think a lot of this fell apart because they weren't here. And these, what they had jumpstarted, these bloodline kings and these armies became, got out of control and they came through and they destroyed everything. And, they, and through other influences of some of these other beings that stayed or, or continued to influence, they basically corrupted and, and destroyed our world. And we're just trying to pick up the pieces of what already existed long ago because there had been a decision made to hide all of this and to destroy it all through the Holy Roman Empire and a lot of other things, they wanted to make sure that they could write the story to you, so that certain beings could play the role of God. Like, so God in the modern Bible is not God. It's this, these beings playing this role, this deceitful role to try to hide all this from us. That's why um, so many people are in shock when they start reading the book of Enoch and in the Nakamadi scriptures, because it's so much goes so much further than what religion is telling us. It actually answers questions rather than just leading to more confusion. And, and if more people could understand a lot of these things, it, I think it would help in our evolution in our evolution yeah. of our consciousness. And that's a perfect segue in the neck into the end here. And the, and we're going to talk about our consciousness and we're going to, we're going to, we're going to discuss the end game here. What's, what is going on right now? What, where are yeah. we going? Are they, you always get a sense that, you know, you're meant for so much more. You get up, you go to work, you come home and you do it all over again every day. You get a couple of days off for, you know, what they call relaxation, but yeah, you're exactly. truly free. That's right. Free time, right? Free time. Oh, you get some free time right now. Yes. I get free time. Why don't we have, why don't we have a, Think about a reality where if our economy wasn't so based on manual labor and a lot of the things that we do are done in an automatic way and people's creativity and their, and their energy was used for really important things and people would come together. Think about how that would change our, how we even view our reality and how we view our existence and our purpose. If someone thinks, wow, I'm meant for something a lot greater than just working at McDonald's my whole life and then, and then you know, having a couple of years left when I'm retired before I die. There's so much more to this. And that's why you can't just tell someone this. They have to go down this road to experience themselves. When they start reading about all this and understanding the ancient history aspects and understanding what these cultures had tried to tell us all along that was then covered up and destroyed by a lot of sides of this that didn't want it being known, you quickly learn what really defines our consciousness and what defines the experience here and everything changes. Everything you see, everything you, the way you perceive everything changes. And, and like I said, you start changing your life. And now um, there's two terms I want to bring up. The ancient Egyptians had very important terms that separates the different physical and non-physical states of our energy. So they said, and the Gnostics echoed, um, basically, which is just Egyptian knowledge, they echo the idea that the physical reality we see around us is the major controlling point that keeps us trapped, okay? Because if our, if our energy at its, at its heart is based on a non-physical conscious eternal energy that is, you could say it's stuck here, and I want to just bring that up for a second. One of the, some of the writings talk about how these beings created some kind of a soul trap system mm -hmm. here where they could feed off of our energy by creating the means for which it was so hard to reach ascension that 99% of the, the beings that were there never could. And so they were stuck in an incar incarnation cycle endlessly. Now what that means is if you were forced to kill someone in, the, in a war or you're forced to do bad things, you, because you're 
you're in a system here where you can't ascend beyond reaching your higher states of energy and leaving this cycle that's been developed here through taking advantage of this energy system of the planet and all the different means that they do. If you're killing people and you're doing all these different acts in your lifetime, you have to try to clear your conscience and clear those, those actions before you can ascend. That's what Osiris in, in Egypt, all, that, all those teachings talk about. Look at how it says these pharaohs, when they were going to the afterlife, they had to have their conscious, conscious weighed, their heart weighed. What did that mean? They show scales. If you have fear and, and unresolved things within yourself, if you don't resolve them, you'll never re ever be able to reach higher states of energy and you'll be stuck in an incarnation cycle endlessly. You keep, and so what do they do? Well, some of these beings who have been in control of this time of Pisces, this zodiacal time of Pisces that have created such a negative polarity here before we go into a, what will be a very positive polarity in Aquarius. It has to be, it alternates. Okay. Before it happens though, they were able to, by the rules of balance that they follow to, um, to create the means for which because of the rules of free will here, because we can decide whatever we want, they, they made the game so that look at today right now. If you decide you don't want to pay taxes or get a job or do anything, you go out in the middle of the wild summer, you build a cabin, you're like, this is amazing. I'm living off the land. Someday, one day, someone finds out you're out there and you go to jail because you haven't paid taxes in 10 years. And why are you paying taxes? You're not, you're not working. You're not doing anything because there's a, there's a system in place here that's been designed where everybody has to follow this, these rules of this system. And, that, and those rules keep everybody in this certain state. Now, if you, if you then take that system and you create chaos all the time through orchestrating wars and all of these mass suffering and fear and dumbing us down through food and all these various means, you can create a, me, a, a way where, yes, hey, you're free, you have free will. You can reach whatever state of energy you want here. Oh, but I've, we've designed the game where it's going to be almost impossible to get there because of all the factors and things that come into play to do it. It's this perfect way where you, you have free, the law, the, the, because of the laws of free will, it forces us to essentially keep reincarnating over and over again and giving our energy because we don't, in our, in our short little mortality of only you know, 120 years that our, our cells have been capped at, that they start to de degrade and we die, um, we, we don't have a lot of time. We don't have a lot of time to figure it out. So we just keep doing this over and over again, right? Until, until our solar system enters into our galactic center of our Milky Way, like right now. And some of these beings knew that despite all this, the energy slavery and all the things that could happen, they knew that eventually we would reach these higher states of consciousness, regardless of all the means that try to prevent it, simply because... When you reach the galactic center, the energy is so much higher and your vibration goes up. You, it's almost like a, a boiling pot of water on an oven that you cannot hold in any longer. And that's where we are now. At this point right now, there's a war in our reality, in our world, to both condition people further, hiding the truth, and to try to create some kind of a, a you know, draconian uh, one world government where people lose all ability to have freedom to ever reach their highest state to, to put a stop to all, all that's going on right now. And that's where we are right now. I mean, we're you hear it all the time that we're living in some sort of simulation uh, or like it's like a training ground for so that we can actually ascend. It is. It, it, they call it a holographic universe. It doesn't mean everything's fake. It simply means that everything comes down to certain levels, strings of vibration. It's called super string theory. Everything is, is vibrating a certain rate and everything is being affected by the electromagnetic spectrum of another body, another object. The larger an object is, the more electromagnetic energy it has to affect something else around it. That's why when, because we're these beings that have these electrical circuits flowing through our, our water charge system, when you, your aura, your energy, you get around somebody else and you haven't fine tuned it, you, you get drawn into their state of energy. That's, give me an example. You're having a great day. You, you feel happy. You feel fantastic. And you're walking down the street and you meet your neighbor and they're crying their eyes out. They just said that their son was just hit by a car and they start telling you all the details. What happens to your state of energy? You match theirs, don't you? That's how we work. 
we, unless you can have the control of your energy and you can, you can not allow others to impact you, which is really hard. You essentially, the collective of humanity is this, has this means where we all are functioning on almost the same level of energy because we're all inf being influenced by those around us. That's why wireless signals and all these things disrupt us on such a level be and because of those factors. So the Egyptians said, getting back to it, they said that the, the great, in the Gnostics, the great illusion of our, of our reality that holds everyone back in the, in the vice and the chains of our reincarnation cycle of energy over and over again is the illusion of the physical world. Because at its deepest level, we're all just energy that's trying to reach higher states. That's it. Energy trying to reach a higher state. And so that's why they call the creative energy within us of, of higher energy called Ba energy. And it's the, ba, it's the energy of creation. Meanwhile, the, the energy, Ka, the, the illusion of the physical world, if someone becomes so focused on that, on just dominating the physical world, they're almost, they're just, they're just caught in their own, they're, they're chasing their own tail. If you think about it, because that's just going to force them to be stuck in an endless cycle forever. So right now to end out, here we are with these higher states of vibration that you can't help, but just happen. That's why so many people are just one day, they're just rapidly changing when they see something, it's just triggering them. And when you start learning this, you know, deep inside that there's so much more to us than we're being told. And so it resonates and people go down this path and it changes them forever. And that's going to be, that's going to happen on a faster and faster level now as we get to this point. So here we go right now. The human experience is, is human experience here is realizing collectively that we're all part of something much greater and part of something much more than just competing against each other and survival of fittest as an, as an animal. And that's why religion in many parts of the, of the, of the world, like the United States in Canada and in a lot of places in Europe, is starting to lose significant members while other places in the world may be gaining them in some ways a lot of the more industrial sized industrialized countries in the world are rapidly losing religion because religious members because people are becoming spiritual because they're realizing what reality is and what they're part of and it's changing the, the funda fundamentals of everything that they that they experience so right. i just, just want to i want to end out chris and just say uh, I really appreciate our discussions and everything. And um, oh, well, Matt, that was awesome. I mean, like I said earlier, the key to everyone understanding where we're going is looking back in the past and you do an awesome job of showing us what happened. And uh, Matt, thank you so much for coming on. That was an amazing presentation and we're definitely going to have you back. And uh, definitely after the book, we're, we're very much looking forward to that. Thank you so much, Chris. I really appreciate everything. And, I look forward to another discussion again.